When we hear the word dinosaur, we tend to think of animals such as Tyrannosaurus rex or the long-necked sauropods like Diplodocus. These animals have two to three things in common. One is popularity. They are all household names and have been pretty much since their discoveries in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The second is that they are all enormous and highly derived members of their respective groups, the theropods and sauropods. Whilst by far the most famous, they were far from the first to reach immense sizes. In this video, I would like to put the spotlight on some of the more obscure and poorly known members of the Dinosauria and show when dinosaurs first became giants. Whilst it is well established that true sauropods had evolved by the early Jurassic period, it is possible they first evolved back during the late Triassic. This refers to the Lessemsauridae, a family of sauropodomorphs known from the late Triassic and early Jurassic, whose identity as true sauropods is a matter of debate. Sauropodomorphs and dinosaurs as a whole were ancestrally bipedal and carnivorous. The most basal member, Buriolestes, from the Santa Marta formation of Brazil, dated to the late Triassic around 233 million years ago, strongly resembled early theropods with sharp serrated teeth for eating small animals. The slightly more derived Eoraptor from the Ischigualasto formation of Argentina, dated to around the same time, was even long thought to be a theropod until 2012, after which several studies found it to be a very basal sauropodomorph. It displayed heterodonty, multiple kinds of teeth, including sharp recurved ones in the upper jaw, suggestive of a carnivore, as well as leaf-shaped teeth in the lower jaw, suggestive of a herbivore. Researchers have concluded that Eoraptor may have been an omnivore. This could be seen as a transitionary form in the sauropodomorph lineage in terms of switching from an ancestral diet of meat to the more derived forms being obligate plant eaters. This may have been due to the carnivorous forms being competitively excluded from the small bipedal predator guild by the morphologically similar early theropods. As such, the later platyosaurs, such as Platyosaurus, were fully herbivorous, with only leaf-shaped teeth for shearing plants. They were also thought to be high browsers, possibly as a result of niche partitioning to avoid direct competition with other Triassic herbivores, such as Dicynodonts and Aetosaurs, which were presumed to be mid to low browsers. This shift in lifestyle prompted an increase in size, Due to the poor nutritional value of plants compared to meat, herbivores as a rule have to eat much greater quantities of food than carnivores. Herbivores therefore need more room internally for huge quantities of plant matter, thus prompting an increase in body size. Larger body sizes would have been further selected for in the case of platyosaurs, as they also needed to be tall enough to reach the high branches. As a 3D object's dimensions increase, however, so too does its mass. The square cube law dictates that as a shape increases in size, its volume grows faster than its surface area. To put it in context here, as the sauropodomorphs grew longer and taller, they became extremely heavy. Carrying such immense weight would put a lot of strain on just two legs. This is where the lessemsaurids come in. They were the first known quadrupedal sauropodomorphs, evenly distributing their body weight by walking on all four limbs. The family Lessemsauridae includes the genera Lessemsaurus from the Los Colorados formation in Argentina, dating to the late Triassic circa 215 million years ago. In Gentia, also from the late Triassic of Argentina, but from the slightly younger Quebrada del Boro formation dated to around 208 million years ago. This group seemingly survived through the extinction event at the end of the Triassic relatively unaffected, as the remaining members are both known from the Upper Elliot Formation in South Africa, dated to the early Jurassic, circa 199 million years ago. 
The two remaining definitive members are Antetonitris and Ledu Mahadi. More tentatively assigned to this group are two genera from the Lower Elliot Formation, dated to the Late Triassic around 205 million years ago. They are Meroctenos and the incredibly fun to say, Columalumo. These two would have lived alongside Melanorosaurus, yet another non-sauropod sauropodomorph thought to have been quadrupedal. There was also another related animal from the Westbury Formation in England dated to the same time, with perhaps the most British sounding name ever, Camelotia. This, however, is where the line begins to blur between what is and isn't a true sauropod as all sauropods are thought to have been quadrupedal, but with columnar limbs. The Lesemsaurids, as well as Melanorosaurus and Camelotia, were quadrupeds, but their forelimbs appeared to be habitually flexed, not columnar. This has made paleontologists reconsider the defining traits of sauropoda. Depending on the definition, Lesemsaurids are either very basal sauropods, or the sister group to sauropods. Regardless of their taxonomic position, these were indeed the first truly giant dinosaurs. The largest known Lesemsaurid, Ladumahadi, was estimated to be about 10 meters long and weighing a staggering 12 tons, making it the largest known land animal to have lived up to that time. It was an incredibly heavily built animal. For comparison, despite Ledu Mahadi being less than half the length of Diplodocus, they weighed about the same. Ledu Mahadi is also thought to be close to the upper limit in terms of mass for dinosaurs with non-columnar forelimbs. This is supported by the Ornithischian dinosaurs, none of which had fully columnar forelimbs. The largest known quadrupedal Ornithischian dinosaur, the Hadrosaur Shantungosaurus, is estimated to be around 13 tons. Columnar forelimbs are an adaptation that has evolved independently across several lineages, as it is the most efficient way to support massive animals. Elephants and rhinos, for example, can both weigh several tons and have fully columnar legs. These straight forelimbs allowed some sauropods to obtain sizes no other land animal has ever come close to. This may also be what allowed them to flourish through the Jurassic all the way to the end of the Cretaceous, whilst the more basal sauropodomorphs became extinct during the early Jurassic. Around 183 million years ago, at the end of the Plainsbachian stage and beginning of the Towakian stage of the early Jurassic, it is believed that the breakup of the supercontinent Gondwana, which consists of what are today the land masses of the Southern Hemisphere plus the Indian subcontinent, caused the formation of subsequent eruptions of the Karoo and Fera large igneous provinces in Africa and Antarctica, respectively. These eruptions are thought to have caused a minor extinction event known as the Tawakian Oceanic Anoxic Event, or TOAE. The release of huge quantities of volcanic gases caused a global warming, as well as acid rain, increasing the rate of silicate weathering, which would then be washed into the oceans. This influx of nutrients may have resulted in huge algal blooms, robbing the oceans of oxygen. This global warming seems to have had a major impact on the flora. Before this event, there was a wide variety of plants with wide leaves adapted to humid conditions. Afterwards, however, there was much lower diversity, with most species being adapted to arid conditions and having thin scaly leaves, such as monkey puzzle and cypresses. Researchers have concluded that the basal sauropodomorphs were adapted for feeding on the diverse, softer, humid adapted plants prior to the event, whereas the true sauropods were well adapted to feeding on the tough, scaly leaved plants that thrived afterwards with their large, wide skulls and high bite force. Their incredibly long necks would have also given them huge feeding envelopes, allowing them to feed on both tall and short plants. Being larger may have also meant they were better at fermenting the high fiber plants than their smaller relatives. This brings us to the Canadon Asphalto Formation in Argentina. 
It was recently precisely dated to the Tawakin stage of the early Jurassic, around 178 million years ago, thanks to the discovery of zircons. This formation was deposited by rivers and lakes surrounded by forests dominated by scaly-leaved conifers. As you might expect, it was home to sauropods such as Patagosaurus and the recently described Bagualia. Patagosaurus has been estimated at around 16 metres long and around 7 tonnes. From this point on, the sauropods would continue to grow until they were the largest animals ever to walk the earth. So we've established when sauropodomorphs became giant, and that whilst the largest ornithischians were indeed huge, they never attained the sizes of some of the truly enormous sauropods. That leaves one major group of dinosaurs, the theropods. Like the sauropodomorphs, the theropods first emerged in the late Triassic, but unlike them, forms in excess of 5 metres in length were very rare. One of the largest theropods known from the Triassic is Lillian Sternus, from the Trossingen Formation in Germany, dated to around 210 million years ago. It was a little over 5 metres long and was thought to be an active predator, possibly even preying on the contemporary sauropodomorph Platyosaurus. Lillian Sternus's taxonomic position has changed several times since its discovery. Sometimes it is recovered as a close relative of Coelophysis from the late Triassic of North America, and possibly elsewhere in the world from the early Jurassic, whereas other times it is closer to Zupesaurus from late Triassic Argentina. Also from late Triassic Europe was Smok, found near Lisowice, Poland, dated to around 208 million years ago. This animal was 5 to 6 meters long and has been identified as an archosaur, and that's a about where this certainty ends. Researchers are unsure whether it is a predatory archosaur closer to crocodiles or if it is a theropod dinosaur. If the latter, it would be the largest Triassic theropod known from Europe. Another large Triassic carnivore with confusing affinities is Herrerasaurus from the Ischigolasto formation in Argentina, dated to around 230 million years ago. Whilst long thought to be early branching theropods, Herrerasaurs may not only not be theropods, they may not even be dinosaurs, and simply share a similar body plan via convergent evolution. Regardless, the largest specimen attributed to Herrerasaurus was roughly 5.5 metres long, but this specimen was originally given its own genus, Fringuellisaurus. Currently, this specimen is considered to be a large individual of Herrerasaurus, but this may change in the future. The largest known definitive theropod from the Triassic is Gojirosaurus, discovered in the Cooper Canyon formation of New Mexico, dated to around 210 million years ago. It was estimated at 5.5 meters long, but the bones showed signs of immaturity, suggesting that Gojirosaurus could have grown even larger. As such, it was named after Gojira, aka Godzilla. It would seem that as the sauropodomorphs grew larger, the theropods grew with them. This trend may have been enhanced by the Triassic extinction, wiping out much of the dinosaurs' competition. As such, the first truly huge theropods appear after the boundary in the early Jurassic. The fragmentary Saltrio Veneta was discovered near Saltrio, Italy and dated to around 199 million years ago. Its fragmentary nature meant that its size had to be extrapolated using comparisons to other theropods. The few bones Saltrio Veneta is known from were most similar to those of Ceratosaurus from the late Jurassic of North America, and maybe also Europe and Africa. By these comparisons, researchers estimated Saltrio Veneta's overall length to be 7 to 8 meters long, 25% larger than Ceratosaurus making it possibly the largest theropod of the early Jurassic. This title is tentative, however, due to it being so poorly known. A much more completely known animal is Dilophosaurus, from the Cayenta Formation of Arizona, dated to around 185 million years ago. With some specimens reaching 7 meters long, Dilophosaurus is the largest known land animal from the early Jurassic of North America, 
As such, the recent redescription of this animal by Martian Rowe has shown that it was adapted to hunting large animals, smaller than itself, such as the contemporary sauropodomorph Cerasaurus. This brings us back again to the Canadon Asphalto Formation in Argentina. In 2019, the theropod Asphalto Venator was discovered, and it was a major find as it redefined a lot of what we thought we knew about the famous large theropods of the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous. Asphalto Venator was a similar size to, and had a skull very similar to, the 7 to 8 meter long Allosaurus from the late Jurassic, yet it was over 20 million years older. Researchers identified it as a tetanuron, the group that includes all theropods more closely related to modern birds and Allosaurus than they are to Ceratosaurus. It also shared a myriad of both derived and basal features, prompting researchers to reshuffle Tetanure, placing Asphalto Veneta within the Allosauroidea, a group also containing Allosaurus and the Carcharodontosaurs, just to name a few. This pushes back the origins of many successful theropod groups way back into the early Jurassic. There was also another theropod from Canadon Asphalto, Eo abelisaurus. At 6 meters long, it was yet another large theropod of the early Jurassic. Its discovery marked the earliest known member of the Abelosaurs, a group famous for its incredibly short arms that saw great success in the Cretaceous, especially in the latter half of the period. Their origins were long assumed to be in the early Cretaceous for many years, but Eoabellosaurus pushes their origins all the way back to the early Jurassic. From earlier relatives like these, all of the famous giant dinosaurs would eventually evolve to become fossils within the very earth they made tremble. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye bye now.